All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and <clears throat> we must, we're going to have a, a real good service today because uh, God ain't letting no visitors come to hear what we need to hear. It's for the church this morning. I praise the Lord for it. Yeah, and, uh, I just thank Him, and uh, I wanted to sing this song to God be the glory this morning because uh, we need to be uh, uh, ever on in our minds that uh, we could be used for the honor and glory of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we will think upon those things while we'll be closer to Him. I want to teach just a little bit this morning in the book of Numbers. And uh, I would like to read to you a little bit about Moses and what he had in his trials and tribulations as he led the people out of Egypt and as he led them through the, the wilderness and the promised land to the promised land. And uh, he had a terrible time. Mm -hmm. he, he had a terrible time. And I, if you would turn to play at chapter number 12 for the first reading concerning his sister and his brother. And I would like to speak to you this morning concerning respecting our pastor. Uh, you know, they didn't respect him. <coughs> They never did respect him. They right. were always, they were always belly aching and griping and uh, afraid they weren't going to get this, afraid they weren't going to get that. And, and sometimes we, as God's people, we get away from the Lord and we want to, we want to belly ache and gripe about this, about that. And I thought maybe this might encourage us this morning to, uh, to uh, just think on our lives and think about what what our thoughts are a lot of the times and how that we conduct ourselves and how that we uh, uh, we feel about our our pastor and uh, and uh, each one of our our brothers and sisters here in Christ in the, in the church so in chapter 12 of the book of numbers verse 1 and Myram and Mo and Aaron spake against Moses now this is Aaron's I mean this is Moses and brother and sister because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman, which uh, the Jews at that time they didn't uh, believe in intermarrying with other uh, others, and if they uh, if they did, it was uh, it was uh, against the regulations and the rules of, the, of Israel. But anyway, in verse two, and they said, "Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses?" Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, when I was uh, trying to study this, uh, it came to me, and the Lord heard it. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> it's something for food for thought. Don't never forget. Uh, you and a friend, you and, and, and it's talking about another friend or something. Uh, are saying something that you don't like about them, listen. The Lord hears it. Amen. He hears it. And uh, we, as God's people, we, we need to buy our tongues and uh, not uh, repeat things that we've heard or, uh, you know, till we make sure that what we're saying is true, we don't need to say it. And here, uh, they, they ask a, a question about here and uh, 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 and it said and they said hath the Lord and he spoke only to them by Moses now the Lord heard this and now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth and the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and to Myron come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillow of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Myra. And they both came. Now he had nothing to say to Moses, but he called them two out. Notice. And the Lord came, uh, and, and he said in verse 6, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Now this, this is, this is, he's talking about, he's talking about uh, 
prophets, or I think he's talking about our pastors, and I think that uh, this is the way he has of letting them know, and of course a lot of people don't understand about dreams, and, and uh, I think that the Holy Spirit now replaces the dream that speaks to our hearts and to our pastor, and he guides him into the word that, that, uh, that the Lord thinks that the church needs to hear. And so it's very important to listen to the pastor as he speaks. And if he's, if, he's, if he's read the same verses three months before and he's made the same comments, hey, shame on you mm -hmm. because you need to hear it again. And you're not, you're not going along with it like you should. And so there's no reason for you to say, well, I've heard that thing over and over and over again. And I've heard people... Uh, even in this church uh, say about the clothing. They, he said, they just keep on about the men wearing this and the women wearing that. Well, listen. If they had a, listened to what the, the pastor had said, they wouldn't be hearing it again. Because I know that, and you know that uh, when we hear the message, that it's just not to throw stones. But it's for our own good. Amen. So uh, this is a, this is a thing that uh, Moses understood more clearly than Miriam and Aaron did, and uh, so here he says uh, in verse seven, "My servant Moses is my soul, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth." even apparently or clearly or plainly or openly and not in a dark speech. And the similitude or the likeness of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Now people this is the same thing that we have to watch our tongues about. And and I mean I'm just saying this uh, because I think that I do it. Uh, I say, I let my tongue fly when I should keep it shut. And I say things that I shouldn't say. And uh, I would probably guess that sometimes others does. But anyway, here's what, what I'm saying is we need to keep a tight rein on our tongues. Amen. Uh, and especially when we're, when we're bad mouthing uh, someone that's standing for the Lord and trying to uh, preach His Word. Uh, we don't need to badmouth that. And so here he says, here he says, with him I speak mouth to mouth. Now he never seen him face to face, but he was in this cloud and he spoke to him more than he could hear him. Now if you remember when Moses asked him one time, said, can I, would I, can I look in your, on your face? He said, no, you can't look on my face till you'll die. But he said, I'll fix a place up here and I'll let you, and I'll walk by you and I'll put my hand up all, over your face. And when I pass by, you can see my backside. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is here, what he's trying to say is, I didn't go in there and, and speak to him uh, in a clear thing because he noticed there was a cloud that come over the tabernacle and covered him but he was in the presence of Moses and he spoke to him and he spoke to him several times that way so here again uh, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against him and he departed he left out he departed and the, cl and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold, Myron became a leper, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Myron, and behold, she was a leper. So we see what the Lord, what how the Lord uh, uh, was trying to get a message across to them. And now notice here is the, the this is the meekness of Moses. And and he he loved he loved Myron, I know he did, and he loved Aaron, his brother. But he says here in verse 11, And Aaron said unto Moses, he didn't say it to the Lord, but he said it to Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let not 
Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out when when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord and said, Heal her and now, Lord, God will seek thee. And so there was a heart of love there for her and for Aaron, because even if they had bad mouth him about his wife, about who he married. And you know, when you when you talk to someone about the woman that you love, uh, and someone comes up to you and talking about her, listen, the first thing a lot of times comes up in your mind, well, I'll just knock her head off. Mm -hmm. But now the Bible says, now the man, Moses, was very meek. And so we see the condition here and Mo, how that Moses uh, uh, took care of pro the problem. <clears throat> now notice in verse 14, and the Lord said unto Moses, he's talking to Moses again, now listen, if her father had spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut up out of the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Myron was shut out of the, from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Myron was brought into in again. And so we see, we see here that Moses uh, kept the people still. He didn't walk off and leave Myron. He waited for her. As the Lord has said, he's, he's, she's going to stay seven days out of the camp, and he could have he could have moved the camp, and she'd have had to tag along, but he, he stayed right there. Notice, and mine was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till mine was brought in again, and afterward the people removed from Hatheroth and pitched in the wilderness of Parah. So here we see this problem that that Moses had with his brother and sister and he was having problems also with the people that was following him mm -hmm. and they were always and you know they got to the point where that they mo they they just got to moses and uh, we'll see a little bit later on what moses did uh because of their their stiff hearted their stiff neck they and all but here in chapter 13 I want you to notice here what happened again. And we were familiar with this, but just to show you how that the people did Moses. And the Lord, in verse 1 of 13, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, and every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness. Then, notice here in, uh, in verse 17, And Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it is good or bad, or what the city they that they dwell in, whether it in tents or strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went to they went up into this land. And knowing, and Moses had told them, now Canaan is a promised land. Amen. And he had told, he had given this promise to Abram, and to and later on to Abraham, and he told him, your 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 seed will inherit this. And these people had already seen the miracles of God, and you know, it to me to me, and and, and of course I, I I know how the flesh is. But to me, as many things as they have seen here, they ought to have been closer to Moses. They ought to have understood what, Amen. what was going on, but they did not. They were rebellious. They, and so they went up. They went up and searched out the land, and lo and behold, it was just exactly what the Lord had told them. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. But, that's the same way with us, but, and God blesses us, 
and He leads us and He guides us, and then all of a sudden, but the Lord uh, uh, is not treating me like He did somebody else. And so then we fall by the wayside, we get out of the will of the Lord, and we, get, we have to be punished for it. And this is the same thing that happened to these children here, and it wasn't just a few, it was hundreds of thousands of children and people. And so in, in, in this then, uh, after they had went up there, and in this, uh, notice in verse 30 what Caleb told them. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are all for we are all well able to overcome it. And, and notice here what they had told them about these things, uh, that the the size of the people and all of this, uh, even the giants that was in the land. But Caleb says, Hey, we can take this Amen. because he was in favor with God. And so uh, but the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land that through which we have gone to search in, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And they had just come back and said, Hey, and they brought this big thing of, of grapes and they took two men to carry one thing of it. And he said, it's true, it's just like it was said, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. But you see how the devil gets into people, how the devil works in these things. And of course it was God's plan. It was God's plan. But uh, I would uh, you notice uh, this thing too. And I want to bring out a point that I saw here. Uh, in verse 25, uh, the, the length of time that it took them to search out Canaan. And it says in verse 25, And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Now this 40 days comes into play again in the punishment of Israel. Mm -hmm. So we'll see it. But then then after this, in verse 14, I, I, I know I'm reading, doing a lot of reading, but hey, it's, it's something that we need to understand. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God have we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath he the page turn here it brought us out to die. I know what it is. Uh, brought brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Now this is this is something they had thrown in Moses' face ever since that right. they had left the land of Egypt. And uh, you know it's the same. It, 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 it happens. It happens like that a lot of times in the church too. And uh, you know the devil gets into people, and they keep on murmuring and they griping and they grumbling. And listen, they wonder. They wonder why in this world things ain't going better now. Well, listen, it's because there's there's uh, disc, disc, discord in the church. There's there's people that 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 just cannot get it fixed. Mm -hmm. How that they should, should should do so here. Notice here in verse four of chapter fourteen, and they said one to another, "Let us make a captain. Let us return into Egypt." Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, and Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of J. I can't quite pronounce that. Which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through it to search it is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us to this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Amen. And of course, if you look in Exodus 6, 6, that's where that the Lord talked to Abraham and said, I'll give you this, or I'll give it to your seed, that they will inherit it, and it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And truly it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, took, it <coughs> took 40 years uh, to get rid of this bunch. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, you think, well, why don't the Lord just take them out right, right away and, and get rid of them? And we see that that Moses and God had a conversation about this, and uh, and Moses and God said, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just wipe them off. I'll kill them all, and I'll take you, Moses, and I'll raise up a a, a nation that uh, will obey. Mm -hmm. But Moses withstood God in in, a, in the in the in this form that he said, "You can't do this. You can't not, you can't do this because listen, the people and these other nations will hear of what you've done, and they'll be saying, oh, he took them out there and let them die.'" And so we see that that in verse eleven, notice in verse eleven and fourteen. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me, and how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them, I will smite them with the pestilence, and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation, and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou brought us this people in thy might from among them. They will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among the people, that thou art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and they, thou goest before them by the day in a pillar of, of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. So here we see that the, Moses is listening to this, and he says now, and he's talking to God, he says, Now if thou kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Now I beseech thee, or I beg thee, let the power of my Lord be great according to according as thou hast spoken, saying. The Lord is long suffering, Amen. and of a great mercy, giving iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearly clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation. So Moses is saying, Hey, Lord, don't do this as a sudden thing, but you have your you have the power to do this. Mm -hmm. And he says, You've got plenty of time. And so Here's what the Lord says, and I and I, I just you know, and the Lord said, "I have pardoned according to Thy word." Mm -hmm. And so again, we see what He told Myron and Aaron in there about speaking to Him face to face and mouth to mouth. He He listened to what Moses said, but now notice there was a, there was something that went along with this. But as truly as I will. All the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he hath another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully in him, will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. Possess it. And so we see here that the Lord, the Lord is long suffering, and we, when we do something before the Lord, that's 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 sinful. We need to get we need to get it straightened out. Listen, but I tell you, we have to be very very particular because the Lord the Lord is long suffering and He'll let us get by with things for a while. But hey, it's not forever, people. And He remembers He don't ever forget anything because uh, uh, you know the Bible says that I'm, I'm the same God today as I was yesterday, and I'm, I'm the same God that I'll ever be. He will not forget, and he didn't hear because the children that were there then, they turned them around, they walked them into the wilderness, they walked 40 days, uh, 40 years out there in the wilderness, plundering around, 
Listen, every one of them except Caleb and Joshua and Moses died after the right. Moses. And he got the glory, people. And he gets the glory every time he does anything. He gets the glory. Amen. He gets the glory when you honor God's Word. He gets the glory when you uh, give Him praise. You give Him glory and He gets it. And listen, when we do things that we shouldn't do, uh, He'll still get glory out of it. Amen. Because, listen, He is the one that has the last say of anything that happens in your life. He's the one that gets the glory. So, we see here that uh, notice in uh, in verse 33 of 14, and your children shall wander in the wilderness for 40 years and bury your whoredom until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After Now here's the, where I talk about the 40 days. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bury your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breath of promise. And I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness, and they shall be consumed, and there shall there they shall die. And the men which Moses sir, uh, and the men which Moses sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against Moses and him by bringing up a, up a slander up on the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report on the land died by the plague before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so he did not forget what they did. Amen. Uh, they thought probably by wandering out there for uh, 40 years that they had got by and that they would eventually get to the promised land, but they didn't. Right. And, uh, uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's some of these things I wanted to read to you just to to let you understand that uh, uh, some of the things that some of the things that we do, uh, we 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 sure need need to uh, ask the Lord to forgive us mm -hmm. and uh, help us with these things. Uh, we're 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 just a we're just a, a no hunk of flesh, out right? There. And we we uh, sometimes the biggest part of the time we don't realize a lot of the time what we're saying, what we're doing. But God, it says here when uh, Aaron and, and uh, Moses, uh, my, uh, Aaron and Aaron spoke to Moses, and God heard it, and He hears our, He hears our, and He knows our thoughts, and so uh, we're in His hands, we're His children, we're His servants, and uh, we, all we can do is just humble ourselves before the Lord and uh, serve Him. Right. And uh, when we do something, <coughs> the Holy Ghost comes to us and speaks to our hearts and says, hey, you know, that's not right. Hey, you better get down on your knees. Mm -hmm. you, better, you better ask the Lord to forgive you because these things because, listen, the Holy Ghost will tell you what you're doing. Amen. He just is sure, He just is sure with <coughs> you because Jesus, when He left this world, He said, I'll send you a comfort, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost this morning is the one that knocks on your shoulder and says, Hey, or He puts the thought in your mind, or He contacts you, Hey, that's not right. Mm -hmm. That's not right. And you should you should repent of it. And uh, I think if you if you'll if you'll see the things that they put Moses through and this listen, this is not even a passion of what he had. He right. When, when they got out there and, and, and had, didn't have no water, he got them water out of the rock. And God told him, said, you go down and strike that rock, you'll get water. And they did it again, and he said, you go speak to that rock, and you'll have water. And Moses at that time was so influenced, he was so terrified or so upset at these people. He, and, he, and he struck that rock twice. And that God asked him to speak to it. And that's, you know, the striking is the killing of Christ. The speaking is the grace of God. And listen, but he struck that rock twice, typifying the, the, uh, the killing of, of Christ twice. That's, that's what I mean. But anyway, 
This <coughs> little, that thing caused him to not be able to go to the promised land. Right. And he got to see it by the help of God. God took him up and let him see it. God let God let him appear again uh, uh, with Elijah uh, and him. They were talking uh, uh, there, and but the thing that it was, Moses slipped, and as meek as he was, and all as he was, and so you know, we got to be very, we need to be very careful about our lives and how they are because the Lord will, uh, the Lord will remind us of these things. The Holy Spirit will. And some days. Some days uh, we might regret saying some of the things we right. say and doing some of the things we do. So this is a lesson for the day. It's done a lot of reading, but you know maybe it'll, it'll cause some thoughts to come into your mind, and uh, and maybe it'll help you some. And I know it's got me to study it, uh, and uh, just think upon the things that I do and how that uh, Moses had to suffer for the sins of the children of Israel, and uh, how that Jesus die for our sins. Uh, we just don't appreciate it like we should sometimes. Right. But anyway, praise the Lord for letting us be together. Thank you all.